I still needed the car and still yearned for some contact with her, but finally I had to admit that it was too painful. I left town on a three-week business trip and used that break as the excuse not to call her when I got back. I don't know how she interpreted my silence, but she also withdrew. Many months have now passed since the last time I returned the car to her, since the last time I heard her voice. The first time I laid eyes on the car, I was disappointed by its homeliness, but consoled by the thought that it was unique. At least no one I knew, besides her, had ever owned or wanted to own such a car. Consequently, I was surprised to find that there are many thousands of them on the streets of New York. Almost overnight, I went from barely noticing their existence to realizing that I lived in a world swarming with station wagons. By becoming an owner of one, she seemed to have been initiated into a special clan, and by sharing the car with her, I felt I had become an honorary member of that same family. The streets are still full of them, and one of them is hers. I never know when it will happen that she'll drive past me. Maybe she'll be heading to the beach with her new girlfriend. Maybe she'll be slogging home from a hard day's work. Maybe she'll just be going to the store for the paper and some milk. And then again, maybe we'll be stuck beside each other for half an hour, she in her car and I in the one I sometimes borrow from my cousin as we crawl slowly over the bridge in the morning traffic jam. If that happens, I'll pretend I haven't seen her. If that happens, I'll start crying uncontrollably. If that happens, I'll keep glancing over to see as much of her as I can. If that happens, I'll wave and smile politely and then curse her out from behind closed windows. <laughs> ¶¶ 